plan is to shoot some film today. I'm out with my Mamiya RB67 this morning. Gonna walk around for an hour or so and just grab whatever shots I see, head back home, develop what I got, and then in the afternoon head back out with my Canon one in. So development is now done. Um, here's everything I shot, minus a couple of shots I took on a fresh, undeveloped roll of my cat. But by the time I put this all together, I should have those as well. Definitely don't love this shot. I, I continue to be baffled by something that I think I've known for a while, but didn't want to admit to myself. And that's that my best shots rarely occur on the RB67, regardless of how much I love using that camera, and virtually always occur on my Canon 1N, which I enjoy using less, but I just am very effective and familiar with that camera body. Not even just my best shots. Good shots of any kind rarely occur on the RB67. There's a huge disparity between the quality of images I get on the two cameras. And it's not generally because of any technical screw-ups on my part. Although it can happen, of course. I still don't fully understand why, but the best I can figure is that the form factor is just throwing me of the Mamiya. It's getting in the way of that relationship between me and the thing I'm photographing. So my singular purpose right now is to figure this out. I've been dealing with this issue like three years now, and just not acknowledging it to myself. Eh. And therefore, I've eliminated coincidence as a potential explanation. In the beginning, that seemed plausible. No longer. But, um, as you're witnessing, I photograph my negatives. That's my method of scanning. I think that's the best method of scanning for someone on a budget. Getting my film professionally scanned is not a great option for me, and the amount of money required to get a decent film scanner would not be feasible for me. I own one. It's garbage. This shot's okay. Don't love the left side of the frame, but the middle is pretty good, I guess. It doesn't really feel like a victory. The curse of the RB67 continues. I hope I can get something to be excited about out here today. Just something, just one thing. I intentionally shot this out of focus, going for something whimsical. I like that. Yeah, that's a win. I have no complaints about that. I overcame the curse for one brief moment in time. My relationship with expensive tools that don't please me used to be that I would sell such tools, get as much money as I could from them, before they lose more value. But my relationship with those sorts of things, tools, objects, has changed recently. It's a long and uninteresting story that I won't bore you with, but... I love using this camera, despite being frustrated by the results. I don't want money for it, I just want to figure out what's going on. I want to be able to change the dynamic, conquer, as it were, the problem, in some sense. Spoiler alert though, I fail to do that. That doesn't happen on this day. If anything, the disparity between the quality of my Canon 1N images and my RB67 images is at best reinforced. At worst, the disparity grows further. Ugh. I mean, it looks like I should have known that would have been a lame shot, but I honestly thought it might have been cool. It's the same brain I use when I'm out with other cameras. I, I don't know why it fails me so miserably when I'm using this camera. Could it be that I'm shooting in a really kind of flat, two-dimensional way with this camera? Maybe something about the form factor is um, prohibiting a lot of movement, dynamic types of shots. That's a pretty flat shot. It's not bad, though. But it is flat and two-dimensional. And that one shot that I responded positively to, that kind of worked for me, 
wasn't flat. It, I was shooting straight up in that shot. But the uh, waist level viewfinder on this camera is fairly conducive to shooting straight up, less so to kind of tilting forward slash down. So here I'm taking a light reading. That's, I think, the first time. Maybe I did it once before this, but up until now I was not using a light meter of any kind, and that is actually the first time I ever attempted that. I just figured after like 20 years of shooting I ought to be able to do this with my eyeballs alone. And it worked out fine, I was actually proud of myself there. I didn't use the uh, Sunny 16 rule, or the Sunny Bono rule, or the Sunny Corleone rule. I've heard of this Sunny 16 thing, but never bothered to look into it because there was never a need. We happen to live in a world with light meters, so I just guessed, I eyeballed it. I've set a few exposures in my time and I just relied on experience. This shot was also straight up, so this will be interesting to see if this is uh, more compelling than the others. Yeah, that's significantly better. I like that shot very much. So I think I'm onto something here. And no knock against the Sunny 16 rule. I mean, I don't even know what it is. I couldn't knock it if I wanted to. I imagine it's probably something like, hey, when it's sunny, you should shoot at f16. Which seems fairly helpful. I was not shooting at f16, but I may very well have been setting an equivalent exposure via my shutter and in the filter. So, okay, I just looked it up. Sunny 16 rule is as follows. Your shutter speed should be the reciprocal of your film speed, and then you set your aperture to f16 when you're in the sun. Um, fair enough, minus the part where I don't know what the word reciprocal means, at least not in this context. So then I look that up. And it turns out it means a mathematical expression or function so related to another that their product is one. The quantity obtained by dividing the number one by a given quantity. Used in a sentence, the compressibility is the reciprocal of the bulk modulus. So that clears it right up. A little more poking around on uh, the portion of the internet designed for dumb people, and I was able to determine that it just means set your shutter speed to match your film speed which I did, unknowingly. Though I was not shooting at f16, I was shooting closer to f4, so that's four stops more light I was letting in, but with the ND filter, I was cutting down three stops of light. Thus, in the end, I was overexposed by one stop, which is exactly what I shoot for when I'm working with film anyway, so mission accomplished. Ugh. I don't know what made me think that might be an interesting shot. I suppose it's the fact that I've been doing more macro shots of textures on my 35mm. Now that's a good shot. Beautiful model. Love my kitty. And it's very difficult to photograph her on this camera. She just moves around too much, and this camera is too slow. Anytime I can get something decent of her on this camera, I think of it as a bigger victory than it probably really is. But here's where I switch to 35mm. Canon one in time. And come on, what did I tell you? It's already insanely more interesting. What is it about this camera, this format, this style of camera body that um, always results in my best work? It's just instantly, all of this is more dynamic and pops out of the frame. I've got a real problem, don't I? I want to shoot on a camera upon which I have no business shooting. Can't produce an interesting image. Full disclosure, these moon shots I'm taking were about two weeks ago. Um, everything else in the video was shot in one day except this. But this is on the roll that I develop after taking a, a walk with my Canon 1 in and I wanted to include it, because I, frankly, it's the best shot I took in the whole video, so yeah, I was gonna include it. So here I am, a nice, lovely afternoon walk with my nice, lovely Canon 1N. I brought only one lens with me, 200 millimeter lens. 
And that's because the last time I was here, I only brought a 50 millimeter lens with me and um, shooting wider didn't particularly grab my interest. So I just thought, well, then I'll shoot longer. Yeah, what can you say? Uh, that is a far more interesting shot than anything I took on the Mamiya, sadly. I wish that weren't the case. At least I can be an effective photographer on some camera, just not the one I want to be effective on. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about this airplane shot, to be honest. Seems like I'm taking real photos now, finally, for the first time today. Am I just exceptionally negative that a win is somehow also a loss? Is that a flaw in my character? Cool. Not an amazing shot, but my worst shot on the one in is about on par with my best shot on the RB67. It's just not fair. But maybe this is an example of just wanting the thing you can't have. That's a cool shot. I, I mean, I'm not gonna hang in a gallery. It's just a shot I took on my walk, but tons of personality. Interesting composition, at least. This area is just a couple of miles from my apartment, my new apartment. Um, I used to come over here and shoot, and it was like a 45-minute drive. So that's kind of cool. I definitely like the area where I live more than the area where I used to live. I just don't love the apartment as much as the house. That's another, uh, that's another cool shot. It's kind of a nothing shot that just works exceptionally well. And that seems to be what I'm able to do with this camera, is just... I say it all the time. I would like to come up with a different phrase, but to, but to turn nothing into something. I can do that on this camera. And on the RB67, nothing just remains nothing. And I literally only took this shot to finish off the roll, to put in a new roll. I mean, the fact that it works at all is kind of a miracle. Though it's the worst shot so far on this camera. Normally I wouldn't just waste a frame like that, but... Well, there was a reason. It has to do with the way I was filming through the viewfinder. Never mind. Uh, the thing I don't like about this shot is the dark patch or patches at the top. With my mirrorless camera, digital camera, I could have held the camera up higher to get a higher angle and eliminate that. So, hey, score a point for a camera other than the one I'm currently using. Uh, I love my digital camera, particularly that articulating screen. What a wonderful advancement in viewfinding. These uh, trees, dark spots at the bottom left, that's just because I was shaking a little bit. If this shot were worth it to me, I would retouch those out, but it just... I don't think it particularly is worth the time. I have that airplane shot, which I like far more, and they're similar. And hey, all these are still working for me. I mean, this has the um, potential of getting fairly repetitive, but so far I'm still digging it. I'm still finding shapes that um, are different enough that uh, I'm into it. My walk was taking me closer and closer to these hills, and I was eyeballing them the whole time, just kind of noticing how the clouds were falling around them. So when I would wait long enough, it would kind of become a new shot. I didn't want to compose it exactly the same way, but I would, I would take a look and it would look different and I would find it worth shooting again. And so I did a few times. I think I may have shot this exact shot to start with, or similar, but the light was a lot more interesting now, and not to mention that little wisp of clouds coming in from the right. Some shots are worth retaking. I didn't feel bad about it. I didn't feel like I was wasting film. On a walk, the sparkly grass being highlighted with the sun low in the sky always grabs my attention, but almost never makes a good image. But I was feeling good about the day. I felt like I was getting good stuff, so why not? I gave it a try. And it kind of captured the mood I was after. It's not a great shot, but it's an okay shot. It uh, fulfilled the brief, so to speak. Um, clouds plus moon. That's what drew me back to the same hill again. And I think it was worth it. 
don't know like picking a favorite of all these of that rocky hill i i don't i don't have any idea which would be my favorite but i'm really glad i did this today you know last night i set my alarm to get up and go shoot early this morning i didn't believe that i would actually get up but but i did and i went out with my rb67 my beloved analog pew pew box and i went out pew pewing stuff and then this afternoon with my other beloved pew pew box and i pew pewed stuff with a higher degree of skill and i was thinking how analog cameras are analogous to <laughs> no pun intended to gas-powered cars or guns i'm not a gun guy although I imagine at some point in my life I will go um, learn to use a gun and shoot targets. It sounds fun, but it's a it's a technology you have to feed. I mean, you have to feed it something other than electricity. And I wonder if one day that will all be gone. Somebody's gonna get bored shooting targets with their particle weapon and long for the physical experience of real bullets. And it seems analogous to what I'm doing with a film camera in the era of digital cameras the smell of gasoline i mean a, a lot of people like the smell of gasoline i don't in particular but I, I could easily see myself missing it becoming nostalgic for it i don't know why i'm bringing this up it's just something i was thinking about while i was out here and the other thing i was thinking is how much history there is in a place like this surely i mean technically there's an equal amount of history in every place but but I was thinking, surely over there at some point, somebody died, bit by a rattlesnake. Over there, somebody was probably shot with an arrow. People must have lived around here and known the land very well. And I was thinking how interesting that sort of a life must have been. Difficult as well. Maybe this is a part of getting older. I mean, at least for me, when I was younger, I didn't think about history at all. But the older you are, I was thinking this too, the harder it is to be okay. You sort of become a collection of emotional wounds, a walking bag of hurt. Something about a place like this and solitude gets you reflecting on this sort of stuff. Well, at least it gets me reflecting on this sort of stuff. And most of all, I was thinking about how much I miss my mom and my dad. They're a thousand miles away dying, and I can't afford to go see them. So on that cheerful note, 